Hickok 45 here. Got my skeet gun here handy. I'm going to take a couple shots with in a minute. You consider them. And yeah, this is my skeet gun, uh, the DP-12. We're going to put it to its paces. I've had a lot of requests to shoot this thing, get a hold of it, and give you my impressions of us of it for whatever that's worth. So I'm going to do that. In uh, fact, I was at Tulsa at the gun show, the big gun show, the Wanamaker gun show, and talked to the owners. They made me take one. And so uh, we're going to keep this thing. So just so you know, in the interest of full disclosure. Now, I'm afraid to shoot it, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> now, we've been shooting it quite a bit and having some fun with it. I'm going to shoot it some more and tell you a little bit about it, a little bit that I know, and uh, let you know what we think about it, uh, okay? Fair enough, it's loaded with uh, some bird shot, and the first six rounds are gonna be slugs. So let's just try it out, see if we can hit anything. I haven't worked too much with the sight, but it's pretty close. Let's just shoot that cute little pink tank there, helium tank first. Let's take the safety off. <laughs> uh, put a big hole in it, didn't it? <laughs> not bad. Okay. And let's not, let's go on to something else. Let's see, that's two slugs. Let's go wake up the gong. Boom. Boy, that'll wake him up. Let's try again. <laughs> what about a two liter with a slug? How about this guy right here? Oh man! Now we're going bird shot. <laughs> okay, now the advantage of this is that once you pump it, you got two quick ones. Not bad, huh? <laughs> and I think it's empty. Yeah. Click, click. And that is the difference when you have two barrels and two magazines, all right? It's a bullpup. Let's take a little look at it here. The DP-12, uh, oh man, I didn't know what to expect. Because I'm not crazy about bullpups in general. Uh, part of it's being 6'8". And, uh, you know, they're just hard to like for me. And we've done the KSG, we've done some of the other short guns like this. Uh, this one is interesting, I will have to say. And we appreciate those guys uh, sending it to us. And, uh, you know, John and I have shot it a fair amount and messed with it. And one of the things about it, bottom line, is, yeah, it's weird, it's different. But it seems to be well built. And uh, that's kind of the opinions I'm seeing, too, around the Internet. I, I concur with, with those folks. And when you first pick it up, that's the impression you get, you know, the, the feel of it. Uh, it looks like a gimmick in a way, uh, but, and it is, you know, a little heavy. It's heavier than the KSG, but it's, it doesn't strike you as you work with it as, you know, obviously a piece of junk or anything or a gimmicky. It is made by people that kind of know what they're doing with shotguns that's the thing i think that's one of the appeals of it even if you don't like it in terms of don't want one of those but uh i see connecticut shotgun manufacturing and then standard manufacturing and connecticut uh combined to make this now connecticut shotgun manufacturing you may have seen them and uh their their uh, products they make really nice shotguns i think like over and unders maybe side by sides really nice traditional shotguns that's what they're famous for, and and I talked I talked to the owner in Tulsa, and he he owns both Connecticut Shotgun and Standard Manufacturing, so they kind of work together on this. So putting this together wasn't put together in a garage by a bunch of guys that thought, oh, let's make a tactical shotgun, everybody will want it, you know, whether it works or not. And so they know what they're doing in terms of making shotguns. Now I don't know how many of these they've made <laughs> in terms of guns like this. This is the first I think. But so they know what they're doing. They started with a seven pound chunk of, uh, of billet aluminum and uh, the receiver and then milled that out. Uh, they apparently went uh, the quality route on this gun. Uh, it feels like quality, all right? Now, whether or not you 
have any interest in it, uh, that's another matter. It's very ambidextrous. You know, safety is kind of an AR type safety right there. It's on the right and left, which makes it ambidextrous, right? Uh, the slide release, you know, same thing. Push down on that with your finger. It's the same on both sides. So the trigger's ambidextrous too. You can reach it from either uh, either side. So it's uh, very ambi, and uh, that always appeals to a lot of people. Uh, the advantage, of course, in having double barrels is you've got that inline uh, approach where you're not having uh, two magazines feeding, you know, into one, you know, bottlenecking into one barrel. So it's, it really is like two pump shotguns, you know, kind of welded together, all right? So it holds 14 rounds in the magazines of two and three quarters. And if three enters, it holds, uh, you know, two less, two fewer. So it's uh, 12 of those. Let's, uh, let's put a couple more slugs in. Well, no, let's, do, let's go ahead and break my shoulder, okay? Let's try some of these three inch magnums from Federal. Man, these are hot, these uh, double lot buck. This, these are the hottest rounds I have, I guess, ever fired in a shotgun, I think. And we fired a bunch of them recently in the Benelli. You've not seen it yet. Yeah, you load it there. Uh, and boy, they really kick in the Benelli. Drag it over here and get to them. But in this shotgun, they don't kick quite as badly. They still kick. There's a uh, cushioning device on the, uh, the butt, two springs. I won't take it off in the video, but there's a couple of springs on that thing and it absorbs some of that. Oh boy, look at me just keep putting more in here just to punish myself. That's okay. And uh, I, in fact, I did it a little bit ago. You take the screws out there and the hex screws and, and you pull the buttstock off and it's got two springs on it. So it helps absorb some of that. Plus it's a fairly heavy shotgun. And so that absorbs some of that weight. Okay. All right. Double lot buck to the extreme. Okay, now I've got to release the slide. Bring them in and put it on fire. And let's shoot. Why don't we just shoot that garbage can once there to see what happens with it? <laughs> oh boy. Now, the thing about it is, I, the cool thing about it is I have two shots, you know, without doing anything. Ready to go. And uh, then, of course, the slide is, is loose, and I'm ready to go again. I'm going to shoot the cowboy. Twice. Look at it. I told you those are hot. Look how they moved him. What about that pan right there? <laughs> Let's see if I've got more. Yeah, i got two rounds there. Now, one thing we discovered is you see those rounds, they can get kind of up in the... I'm going to not point this at, at my feet or anything to where well, they went in okay. If it's vertical, sometimes it might want to start to hang up, but then if you just kind of put it back uh, horizontal, they generally go right in. Or if you just shake it a little bit and they're fine. But we've experimented pretty much with that, so that's just something to be aware of. So I got two more of these babies. I'm going to shoot the propane tank over there. Oh man, I heard them hit hard. <laughs> Look at that. That thing is very heavy, and it's actually swinging now. It's 50 yards away. <laughs> oh boy. Now I've noticed the shells come out and hit you right there, uh, like the KSG. They don't come flying out quite as hard and fast, I don't believe, because I mean, the, the KSG will actually hurt you and cut you as it did me. These come out and uh, they hit you, but not quite as bad. Uh, so anyway. So again, the operation of it is, and these are things, I know that, uh, you know, it's double barrel, and I know initially I thought, oh, that's interesting, you can fire two barrels at one time, and wow, that'd be cool, you got an incredible weapon here, boom, you know, two 12 gauges, two more. Well, the more I thought about that, when I realized, no, wait a minute, that, if you've ever fired two barrels of a double barrel, even birdshot, it's not something you want to do again, probably, or very often. So it would really render it, uh, that would render it a gimmick, okay? So it's like, a, it's like my uh, Satori or, or my Browning. It's, it's uh, it, it, same trigger, you just fire twice. It's like semi-automatic, except once you have it cocked, it's click, click, you know, as fast as you can pull the trigger. All right, so that's the way it operates. It fires, but, and that's the way you'd want it, duh. You wouldn't want to be firing two rounds at one time. Uh, in fact, you can't do that. So now if there ever was a case where you felt like you needed to do that, like one 12 gauge blast 
wasn't enough it, it won't do that but now again boom boom you can fire two very quickly so that would be the route to go i don't know what i was thinking uh partly it was part of that notion that it's kind of a gimmicky gun uh that you know that people will buy that just because it's so interesting and different and all that it actually uh you know has some practical value there i think uh, so so you so you get that now when you're when you're firing like the magazines the flies locked up when i fire once click i can't work the bolt or the slide i fire a second time now i can all right so and you know so there was a time or two there i was sort of forgetting i'm used to the traditional pump shotgun you have to get used to it orient yourself to it so you're going to have two shots you're not going to mistakenly work the slide you know that's not going to happen it's not going to let you okay and then also in our experimentation with it too a question you might have is when you fire let's say you uh you don't have something in one chamber and uh for some reason you put an extra one in the one one magazine you get it cocked it's going to fire the right barrel first and the left barrel second no matter what okay so uh it, it's not it's still going to have two clicks you know for both barrels no matter what so that's good it doesn't need to have the recoil uh to have fired the right barrel in order to to cock the trigger so i'm kind of getting at okay and i like that and i like that too so in terms of the operation that's how it's going to work you're going to get two clicks you both both firing pins are going to fall no matter what whether the chambers are empty or there's just one in one one chamber not the other none of that so and when you think about it, that's probably the best way to have it you know uh some of the talk and, and the capabilities of like on the ksg having some slugs on one side and birdshot on the other or double lock buck and all that sort of thing and all that sounds good you know in theory but when it comes right down to it uh under stress you know i'm not sure how how viable you know, that would be but uh, you could in this one uh, you could alternate uh kind of like i did to begin with you could do something like that put birdshot slug or uh, double lot slugs or however you want to do in one chamber uh, the left side you could put one type of ammo and the right side a different kind of ammo if you could keep track of that it does fire the right barrel first each time all right so have an interesting uh, proposition uh let's see now try to be safe with it hey uh, you we've got the uh, john just had to have the breachers on there and uh, <laughs> they do kind of help give you an idea where the barrels are you know as you're looking down through there and uh, those i think uh, cost extra it has screw and chokes that come with it and uh, so you can get these extra. Now those are wild, aren't they? So they threw in those uh, for, for us for the demonstration purposes, I guess. But that thing, that's like having a bayonet on there. I guess you could use that for a breacher too, but mainly that is a wicked weapon. You wouldn't need any ammo with that thing. In fact, I, I told you, I don't put those things on there. I'm, I, I'm afraid to touch it. Or where am I gonna put it? Where are you gonna stand it up in the corner? Are you gonna, you know, that's, a, that's a wicked. Uh, so anyway now it's not cheap it's like what 13 1400 dollars and that's what you get the thing you get with this i think and uh, that's my site i put on there is uh seemingly quality construction you know I, i've been looking around like i always do around the internet seeing what the opinions are so far on on the things and you don't really find a lot of negative associated with the actual operation of the uh, of the shotgun. It uh, it it is what it is. It's a weird bird, and it's a bullpup, but it seems to be well built and solid. I it, it, one of the things I don't like about a bullpup is just kind of awkward to to manipulate back here and all that. But I don't know. It's not too bad. I'm kind of getting used to loading it. I like to. I don't like that muzzle pointing at my feet. So like avoid that so you know, i'll probably drop quite a few of these before the day's out we'll get those if we don't law more we'll find them right so you don't really pinch your fingers and cut your fingers loading it i've noticed with both magazines we'll put bird shot in there give my shoulder a break and i should be on safe there before we do that again it holds uh, 14 of these uh we were experimenting with like topping it off tactically while you're in combat, which really isn't as hard as you would think for a bull pup. For example, you know, I've shot some rounds here. If I've got these on my belt or so, I can, I can reach up under here. You know, I got a, a moment to, you know, <laughs> to do it as I'm watching the enemy out there. 
I could pull off my belt and you know put some more rounds in. Uh, of course, you've got 14 to begin with, or 16 if you've got two in the chamber. So it holds quite a bit of ammo. If you were considering something like this as a home defense uh, shotgun, you know you're going to need more than uh, 14. Uh, you got some serious problems if so. So it is a kind of firearm that uh, you load it up and then you don't necessarily have to worry about other ammo supply, I guess. I hope you don't. So bird shot. All right. Let's take a couple of shots with this. <laughs> click click so that's the uh i guess the advantage of it being able to just pull that trigger and i've noticed that with my my real skeet gun uh my over and under browning there's something pretty cool about uh now i like double triggers on my old-fashioned double barrel shotguns but there is something if you've never fired a, a shotgun like this being it, you know in battery and being able to boom boom no cycle working nothing has to feed you've got two pretty sure shots you know just like you start out with with a, even a traditional double barrel shotgun you know you've got those two shots once you've got them in your chamber probably nothing's going to go wrong you know nothing has to feed no cycling or anything at all and every time you bring it back you got two more just like that so uh that's that's pretty interesting i have to say you got your uh, like witness holes there you can see the rounds and uh, you can even see the first one put it there you go you can see the end of the first one so that tells you that you have at least two of two rounds probably if you load them uh, evenly there and uh now you got the, like magpole you can attach magpole accessories here and of course you got your picatinny rail on top a little bit on here for the uh, forward grip uh what else about it here i can make up uh well, of course a lot of polymer and everything but you, again you got that solid steel receiver or that aluminum receiver one piece and uh, it it just seems really solid and it feels really solid because it's not light it's uh, it's heavier than the the ksg i gosh I, what was it three pounds difference it's it's heavier and it, just like in a handgun that's good and it's bad say so it's uh it's going to cause less recoil if it's heavier you know so you know you, you benefit from that i don't know if i'd want to pack this thing around all day i'll tell you that it'd be a it'd be a chunk it would be a chunk i gotta say my biggest negative with a firearm is it is a bullpup because i'm not crazy about bullpups and uh, part of that comes from my size but for what this thing is, it, <laughs> uh, I was surprised. I really was. I expected it to be. Uh, and I've had requests from you all for I don't know how long. The last year, it seems like, or six months, when, since the thing came out, and uh, you started hearing anything at all about it. To get my hands on one. Get my hands on one. And I, I just I, I didn't even remember what it was. And someone said, "Get a DP12. Get a DP12. Okay, what's a DP12?" And I looked it up, and I talk to these folks you know and uh, okay dp12 yeah we do want to try that out i guess i guess so i i like it okay uh i'm gonna make john take this though he's uh he's even a bigger fan of it i think than i am and uh maybe we'll do a breakdown field strip video we'll let him do that okay because it's a little more complex to break down okay i'm not going to do that today it would, it would, that needs a separate video for that if you want to see that so talk john into doing that uh, but because it, it the way it's made it is very solid and it is well engineered apparently let's uh we got a pan sitting over there let's shoot some bird shot at it i'll put a couple shots maybe we'll see if bird shot will go that far ah, get that safety off <laughs> well if it went through that you can probably see through the zoom but uh that's 50 yards so i wouldn't expect too much Let's try that uh, tombstone right there. Boy, another shot, cowboy, no. Okay, 
Okay, I got a click there. Uh, not sure what I did. I've looked at the video. I didn't short shuck it, I don't think. Maybe I did. I thought I loaded both chambers uh, equally there. Both uh, magazines equally. Who knows? Uh, that was probably something I did. I don't know. We've not had any issues with it. Uh, let's let's oh we got some more slugs let's try those okay about out of slugs see how you load it there get those over here i can stick them in be careful with the bull puff it's real easy to point it at your feet yeah, it really is even though there's nothing in the chamber uh still you don't want to point it at your feet don't want to shoot your feet all right so we got slugs in here All right, safety. Oh, I'm gonna try a ram. <laughs> oh, I forgot I got another round. Oh. <laughs> Go to the gong. Yes, try a turkey. Uh, what that did? <laughs> okay, we're empty. <laughs> so, uh, not even really adjusted that side. I just stuck it on there, took it off another firearm, and it's it's pretty close uh, enough to show that it's like all shotguns with slugs. It will hit pretty much what you're aiming at if it's something that's reasonable size. It's kind of like a, a rifle, uh, at least a. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Not really a rifle, but at moderate distances, sometimes you feel like you have a rifle. Uh, what else about this thing that uh, I need to make up a story about? Like, again, it doesn't come with a sight. It doesn't come with these breaching uh, uh, screw-in chokes. So now if you're going to do a lot of breaching, that's something you'll need to buy extra. And But other than that, you know, this, this is what you get. And I believe it's around 1400 bucks. And uh, what else about that thing that uh, is important for you to know? Uh, the recoil pad does, does work, that the springs on there. Uh, again, the weight in that too makes shooting these things uh, doable. They do. When I, we were doing some shooting with the uh, Benella, like I said the other day. And I mean to tell you. I, uh, I, I I did get some bruising from it. Not that it's so bad you can't shoot or anything, but they really kick. Out of this, they're not quite so bad. And again, when you're, let me jack those in, safety's on. When you get them back here now, if you're down like this, and uh, it doesn't want to go into battery, like it, it went in okay just then, if you just kind of shake it a little bit, bring it back up you will just take care of that okay just something to be aware of i know what we need to do we need to pop that that, that tank can't get through in here we go. let's get some ears on mm. get the safety off <laughs> man it's got some power i can still get him <laughs> Oh, there's a pot that hasn't been smoked. Ah. I guess he's not going to get smoked with that. All right. So, uh, you can see me uh, being kind of awkward with it. It's, it's not my <laughs> my normal uh, manual of arms or operation. But uh, it's the kind of thing, if you're going to use it, you just need to get used to it. Shoot it a lot and uh, probably not be switching back and forth with your favorite 870 or Mossberg. But uh, you do get used to it. It actually is more like an AR in a lot of ways with that safety where it is. So, I don't know. I'm not recommending you go around and buy one of these things. just want to show you uh, how it works and, uh, you know, basically what I think of it. And I'm a little biased because I don't really like bull pups that much. So, like a lot of firearms, I try to give it a, you know, even if it's not something I'm crazy about, I'm trying to give it a fair look. There we go. 
There's a couple here. <laughs> Boy, that really smokes them. <laughs> oh. You see, I'm getting better about remembering uh, two shots, pump, two shots, pump, two shots. We'll put just a few more in and I'll, uh, I'll let you get to dinner. So, forward, safety on. Got to remember, you got the safety. Let's see. Got another. No? Okay. Okay, we're on safe. Uh, get the hang of it and uh, works just fine. I always want to grab it with my other hand. I guess tactically that wouldn't be wise, but actually to me it feels better doing this. I got some blood on my finger. That was from something else I was doing. But this just feels better to me. But now if I was carrying this on duty, I would uh, practice the more tactical reload. be able to shoot it fast from this position all right okay i think that garbage can needs a little more work and we've got another two liter here so all right <laughs> want to save a little bit for this pot right here i think i have yeah so i can tell i've got two more rounds there's the end of the, the round. So let's shoot this ammo can. <laughs> pretty interesting, pretty interesting. All right. So she's empty, as you can see. There are certain advantages to having two barrels, uh, obviously. You get two shots, two quick shots, and uh, Maybe more reliability. Uh, I mean, it should just be inherently a little more reliable, I guess. And uh, the cool thing about it is it'll eject the rounds into your, look at that, I got, there's one, two, three, there you go, you can save your holes. That's pretty good, just hold it over a pocket like that. <laughs> so uh, like I say, with that inline feeding, you know, you shouldn't have uh, maybe as many problems as you could have with others. So I don't know, ooh, that barrel's hot. I don't know. Uh, if this is something that would uh, would fit you, uh, fit your needs, I can see this being. Uh, no, maybe I did cut myself on that loading that thing. Maybe I need to, gloves on or something, huh? Uh, it it might if you're uh, in a tactical situation. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe SWAT teams. This is one shotgun that actually uh, might go beyond that level of gimmick, and uh, you might see it in use. I don't know because it's it's well made and it seems to do what it's supposed to do pretty well uh, I, you know we've not had like uh, issues with it and uh we've shot a bunch of stuff through it and i'm seeing on the internet that uh that a lot of people seem to like it okay okay for what it is again i keep saying that for what it is uh so pretty interesting shotgun i'll have to say my biggest uh applause just goes to how well it seems to be made okay and i guess i am cutting my finger or i did cut it on on in that loading process so i don't know if that could be honed down a little bit or not or uh, where exactly i did that uh most people i guess would be wearing gloves if they're in a real tactical situation right so anyway the dp12 Pretty interesting shotgun, and that's kind of my impression of it. It, it. it works and does what it's supposed to do really well, it seems, and it seems well made. It's probably not one I would purchase personally, but, uh, you know, I'm impressed with uh, the quality of it. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. 
So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay. And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it. Okay? Thank you.